Hello friends and welcome to Fire Emblem Discussion. So I put up a poll this over the weekend asking you guys which video I should make, whether it should be about New Game Plus, which classes to master, or which students you should recruit for each house. But the one that won is class mastering. So I'm going to give you my general guide, my general guidelines that I use when I pick classes for my characters. Um, in terms of their mastery skills. So when you master a class in Fire Emblem Three Houses, you earn a skill, or a combat art, or both. And these combat arts and skills can be really good sometimes. So I'm gonna give you my general rules for the ones that I think are good, and then I'm gonna give you kind of like my general rules for the ones that I think are bad, so you can make your own decisions and be an informed player, I guess. Okay, so first off, let's talk about let's talk about these beginner classes. These are the ones that everyone kind of like. I, I've I've seen and heard a lot of people just say, "Oh, I'll just skip over these because whatever." You know, Mirrodon, fighter, soldier, monk—they don't matter all that much. They're not very good classes, and you're, they're basic. They're as basic as can be, right? They're not the best classes in the game, but. They don't take nearly any time to master, right? They're really fast to master. And the skills they give are great early game skills. Being speed plus two from Myrmidon, being defense plus two from soldier, strength plus two from fighter, and magic plus two from monk. And then they also learn movement combat arts like shove, reposition, shut, uh, and swap, and drawback. All of these are super useful, especially in the early game. Just to get that extra bit of movement that, or to reposition an ally into a safer spot. Uh, it, it's just there's a lot of strategy that can be had around those movement arts. And then also the plus two in the early game, like plus two speed in the early game can be a huge difference. Plus two strength in the early game can mean a lot. Same goes for defense and, and magic. So don't not master one of these. Like they're really easy to master. They're really fast. And they give you a decent skill. And why these skills are good, why I think they're good, like my general rules, right, is using them isn't, isn't like a luck-based thing. If I want to use drawback, I use drawback no matter what. It doesn't, there's no, it doesn't like add evade or something, or it doesn't make, it, it's not a, like a percentage chance of happening. It's not a luck percentage chance of happening. It's not a, a, a speed or dexterity percentage chance of happening it is 100% guaranteed and it's something that I can 100% work with same goes for fiendish blow which is a skill learned by the mage if you master mage you get fiendish blow which grants magic plus six during combat right so those are kind of my rules for skills that I think are really good skills that the player can utilize as opposed to other skills in the game like we'll take a look at some say from assassin they give the skill lethality and that skill while it's cool yeah you can kill any enemy in one hit if you're lucky it's a dexterity times 0.25 percent chance of happening so super low chances of happening right but yeah one shot it's a one shot kill it's always fun to see it's always fun to do but it's not a tool for the player to use it is another random element that you're adding into the game that you have to plan around. Something you have to work around. And, you know, uh, generally killing some, killing an enemy in one hit is going to be helpful to you. But there are some instances, like say you're holding a choke, choke point, but you don't want your guy that's holding the choke point to kill all the enemies that are coming up so they don't have to take as many attacks or something. Um, and then they get lethality three times in a row and then they die because they took four or five hits instead of one taking one or two like they were supposed to. So that's just like skills that are luck based are never quite as good. So if like assassin's a cool class, if you want to be an assassin, that's cool. But I wouldn't necessarily be an assassin for the, the mastery skill, which is lethality and assassinate, which is kind of the similar deal except in a combat art. Um, Fortress Knight. And Paladin both also have mastery skills that are, are random chances. Uh, Pavice and Aegis, which can just decrease damage from certain weapons depending on which skill it is, whether it's Pavice or Aegis. And, you know, those skills sound great. You know, like, oh, reduced damage in battle. But again, it's it's a, it's a luck thing. It's a, it's a random thing 
it's based on it's a percentage of chance based on your stats, and you don't know ever like a like hundred percent chance if it's going to happen, and it's not something you can count on. And if you're counting on it happening, then your your strategy might need a little tweaking, friend. You may need a little help. So, those are my general rules for for uh, like bad skills. If it's something I have to work around and not something I can work with, if it's something that I have to plan and say okay this might happen instead of something that i can say okay this is going to happen then it, it, it's hard to it's hard to play with in my opinion so let me give you a couple more examples of skills that are not luck based that are 100 percent that are really really good so we'll just go to the intermediate classes and take a look at mercenary so mercenary uh they learn the skill vantage when you master it. Ma Vantage allows the unit to attack first in combat, even if like the enemy is attacking, like atta initiating the combat, they will attack first if they are under 50% HP, greater than, or less than or equal to 50% HP. And that's something you can plan around. You can look at the enemies that are going to attack, see how much damage they're going to do, and can say, okay, so this guy is going to deal you know, 15 damage to Byleth. This one's going to do 10 to Byleth. Your Byleth has, say, 40 HP. Okay, now he's under 20. He's going to have Vantage now. And maybe this third guy's going to attack. And this third guy has less HP. And Byleth can kill him in one hit. So, it's just... Again, something you can plan. Something you can use. Rather than something that happens to you. Uh, Cavalier is another great one. It has the skill Desperation. Where, again, if you're under or equal to 50% HP, if you were to make a follow-up attack or, you know, you were to attack twice in one round of combat, um, if you initiate the combat, you do both of those attacks in the same, like, at the very beginning, like, first. So the enemy doesn't get a chance to counterattack. Which, again, awesome if you can, you can uh, get your HP low on purpose and, and use that to your advantage. And then there's a ton of skills in the game that are like that. You know, yes, like Death Blow, um, Fiendish Blow, which you get from Mage, Armored Blow from Armor Knight. All these skills that you, again, you control, you know they're going to happen, are great. They are spectacular. Um, but yeah, those, those are my only thoughts on this. Really, there's so many skills in the game. There's so many classes worth mastering and even those ones that have like the luck based um mastery skill like priest they have freaking miracle which just honestly isn't a very good skill any 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 class with any class can be good and mastering any class isn't a bad thing but if you're looking for the best skills i would personally avoid those ones that are uh random they're luck based and they can they will more often hinder your strategy by either happening or not happening than they will help you, if that makes sense. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate your time. Um, I hope this answered some of the questions that people were having about classes and which ones to master. If you have more of them, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer those either in a future video or if it's a quick one, just in, just in the comments for you as well. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion as always. And, of course, have a fantastic day.